guys, so today's video is going to be 10 foundations that are high end that I personally think are worth every single penny for one reason or another. Obviously, they're not going to be suited to every single person's skin type and all of that kind of thing. Different people are after different things in foundations, but I've compiled my personal top 10 and I wanted to share them with you guys because I feel like some of them don't get enough recognition. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first foundation has been a favorite of mine for years and years and years and years. I remember the very first time trying this foundation, I hated it and I just think it was, I was applying way too much. I wasn't applying it in thin layers and building it and it is the NARS Sheer Glow Foundation. So they don't come with pumps, which is very annoying. I did purchase pumps for my bottles um, and I do have a lot of different shades because this is one of the foundations I always use in my makeup artist kit. So it did used to be the basically only foundation I would use on my clients. Now I kind of like to mix this with another foundation which I will share with you guys or you know use this on more mature skin, skin that is really dry, skin that could use a little bit more of a dewy finish. I don't think this is a sheer foundation whatsoever. I do think this foundation is medium to full coverage. You can definitely build this up to full coverage but I would say it's about a standard medium coverage. I love the finish of this, it always gives me glowy, perfect looking skin. When I wear it, I find I have a lot of people say, what foundation are you wearing? It looks so great. And that's how I always know that a foundation is working, when other people actually point out your skin and say, wow, I really like the way that looks. So the NARS Sheer Glow is $69 from Mecca Cosmetica. And that is of course Australian dollars, that's what I'm going by. Um, it is cheaper in America. but you know, everything, everything is different. And the explanation kind of little blurb says, a master of the runway, this hydrating foundation brightens and even skin tone whilst providing all day coverage with a natural radiant finish. And I think that's the best way to describe it. It's brightening. It honestly just gives your skin a healthy glow. Like you just look healthy, like plump and juicy skin. I don't know what I was trying to say. I definitely recommend this one for anyone with normal dry combination or extra dry skin. I feel like this isn't really suitable for oily skin, but it can work. You just have to play around with it and find how it will work for you. But I honestly love it and I will never not have it in my collection. So the next foundation is, I'd say one of my top three foundations if not my all-time favorite foundation now, and it is the MAC Studio Fix Fluid Foundation. I don't know why it took me so damn long to try this, because I was missing out. This stuff is ultimate full coverage, like you won't get any fuller coverage than this. This is foundation I've kind of replaced in my makeup kit and I use on pretty much every single person that I do makeup on now. Shades here are NC20 and NC15. I also have NC25 and I also have NC40 on the way so that I have a darker option for probably not myself because I am quite pale but I have it in my kit for other clients and people. I honestly love this. It photographs beautifully. I did a wedding uh, about a month ago, if that, and I used this on all the bridesmaids. I didn't do the brides makeup, but I did all of the bridesmaids. They all got this on their face. And I was even blown away with how it photographed so beautifully. Like, I can't even tell you. It just made all the girls look insanely flawless and just perfected like airbrushed that's a good way to put it it does have SPF 15 I don't find it gives any flashback to be honest oh my gosh so this foundation costs $54 which I personally find so reasonable like you don't really need a lot of product to get a flawless full coverage the way I prefer to 
apply this foundation is with a damp sponge and I feel like it doesn't take away any coverage but it kind of makes your product last it makes it go further over your face another one that doesn't have a pump which is annoying because I do like pumps you just feel like you've got more control over how much product you get but you can buy the pumps I just haven't gotten around to doing that because I'm a lazy girl but honestly if there's one foundation that I really think everybody needs in their collection or at least needs to try just once it's Mac Studio Fix the only con is that it kind of has a like strong smell when you first put it on and it kind of smells like paint but weirdly I love that smell it's kind of like when you smell magic markers I don't go out of my way to, but if there is one there that I'm about to use, I'll sniff it. Like, I don't know what it is. It's like that addictive smell. Um, but it, uh, I'm sorry, I'm so weird. But the scent goes away literally two minutes after you apply the foundation to your face and you don't smell it at all. So it's not really anything to worry about, I don't think. And I do always warn my clients kind of before I pop it on. I just say, just so you know, this foundation does have quite a strong smell, but the smell will go away. So just let me know if it's bothering you. And no one ever says like, oh, get this off my face. I can't stand it. So, I mean, I don't really even find it a con. I just think that's just one of the things that comes along with this foundation. Next up, I have the foundation I'm wearing on my skin today. I haven't worn this in a while. I kind of left it in the bottom of my collection and forgot about it. But it's the only stick foundation that I've ever tried that I've ever loved. I have tried the Makeup Forever HD Stick Foundation. I've tried that countless times. I just don't like it. I just don't like the way it sits on my skin. I tried the Tarte Amazonian Clay Stick Foundation, which I actually hate that one. Like, for me, it just does not work. It does not work. It doesn't give me any coverage. It breaks up. It almost makes my skin look worse. But this one, the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation, is a whole different story. This one is so good. I was really hesitant to buy this because I have had such... Kind of bad experiences with stick foundations in the past so i was hesitant but i just saw so many people loving it and i thought you know what i'm just gonna bite the bullet buy it and see if i like it and i do i actually have a whole first impression and like wear test on my channel which i will link down below for you guys along with every other foundation i talk about it lasts throughout the day it doesn't break up which is the main thing like i find stick foundations break up so easily it doesn't get oily it's super easy to blend out i mean i prefer my, most of my foundations with a damp sponge it's just like i don't know i've just gotten so used to it and it's so effortless or as a brush, it's like a little bit more effort. And like I said, I'm lazy. I have the shade Linen, which is a nice yellowish color, which if you guys know anything about me, you know, I always gravitate towards yellow foundations. I don't know why there are pink undertoned foundations in the world, because if you have redness and pinkness to your skin, you want to counteract that. And one way to do that is with yellow more yellow based products so yeah i love the color of this it matches me like my fake tan is starting to fade so it does match me quite well at the moment i'm just going to check the price of this because i know it's like oh it's actually not that bad it's 67 dollars australian they do have a lot of shades which also the mac foundation and the nars that i just spoke about they have an entire humongo sh shade range as well which is always something that i find is amazing i do find it to be very full coverage and it, it's just creamy it blends so easily i don't know what else to say about it i just i really really like it and i think if you're on the fence about it i do think you should just try it because i haven't really heard any negative reviews on this like literally i don't think i've seen one i'm sure there's someone out there that this doesn't like agree with their skin but i love it and i'm really glad i bought it even though it was expensive and it was a risk for me i just think it's the best stick foundation i've ever tried next foundation is like the biggest bang for your buck ever it is expensive i didn't really want to buy it but again i just heard too many th good things about it not to 
and it is the Marc Jacobs Remarkable Foundation. I am in the shade 27 Bisque Neutral, which is my perfect fake tan shade. It doesn't match me when I'm fair. So the packaging, it has its little lid, but then it unscrews and it's kind of just like a stick. So I just pull the stick out and I plop a few dollops on my face. But this product, I literally, every time I apply it, I forget that you need such a teeny weeny amount. Whenever people say that, I'm always like, oh yeah, whatever. Like, I always use more than other people. I like full coverage. But this is actually so full coverage with such a small amount. I don't know how they do it. It's so good. It does have a weird smell that I, I don't like this smell of this. It's not like the MAC one. I don't know how to describe it, it just doesn't smell good. But again, that smell doesn't last long, so I push through it because it looks amazing. The only thing, I have worn this in the summertime, which summer in Australia is really bloody hot. And this does not hold up well on like a 28 to 30 degree day. That's degree Celsius, by the way, not Fahrenheit. I just found it kind of sweated off my face. So I tend to wear this one more in the off months, like winter, autumn, spring, but not in summer, unless I'm just like doing something indoors that's air conditioned or something like that. But I do love this foundation and I find it to be so beautiful on the skin. As I said, it's just so insanely full coverage and it says on Sephora, an innovative foundation that delivers instant full coverage in a single dot for less foundation, for more coverage that lasts up to 24 hours. I don't agree with the 24 hour claim, especially in summer. It may last for some people that long, but not on me, unfortunately. But regardless, I do love this foundation just for the sheer fact that it makes your skin look so perfected, so full coverage, and you need such a tiny amount of product. Next foundation that I absolutely adore is the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Matte Longwear, Soft Matte Longwear Foundation. Sorry, I forgot the name of it. I love this foundation so much. Fenty just had their like one year anniversary from when they launched and I can't believe it's already been a year. It doesn't seem like that long. I bought this pretty much straight away. I've got two shades. I've got 140, which is my paler shade, and I've got 190, which is my more tanned shade. And I really love this foundation. It's only $50, which is really good for a high-end foundation. They have an extensive range of shades, and Rihanna released all of these shades from the get-go. She didn't just start out with like 10 shades and then slowly build it up. She went out and created all of these different shades straight off the bat, which I really admire. I think it's fantastic. Again, I'm going to link my first impression wear test of this down below along with the link to the product. I was so impressed from day one of trying this. Like, I absolutely love it. It lasts all day long keeps me matte. I love this in the summer because I just don't feel like my oils come through much. It's described, yeah, as a soft matte longwear foundation with buildable medium to full coverage in a range of 40 shades. So 40 shades is a lot. And I would say this is, yeah, medium to buildable full coverage. I definitely usually build it up to full, but you also don't need a lot of product with this. I find that a little bit goes generally a long way. It's a very runny foundation and it just works. I just really, really like it. I also like the packaging. It's like a frosted glass and then it's just got the white lids. So that's another thing to point out that I like, but Honestly, I think this is such a good foundation and for $50 for a high-end product, I think that is very reasonable. Next up, I have the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Foundation. I started out with the regular HD foundation, which I think most people did, and then they brought this one out. I honestly don't notice a humongous difference between the two. I still have some of my bottles of my old one, which probably a little too old, but I haven't parted with them yet. 
So this is my color, which is Y245, which was the equivalent to the shade 120 in the old version. Again, I bought a whole heap of these when I very first started freelancing and I would use them on like countless amounts of people and it tended to work on pretty much every sort of skin, whether you were oily, whether you were really dry, like it just tended to work well for everybody. I do adore this foundation. I find it gives me a medium to full coverage. They do have a lot of different shades. This is actually my mum's favourite foundation. I gave her a bottle of my old one that I had in a darker shade because she's like, she's really tanned compared to me. I don't know why I'm so pale compared to my mum. But she is in love with this foundation. She likes to wear just a light coverage and it makes her skin look beautiful. Yeah, I feel like it works for just about anybody and it always gives such a natural satin finish to the skin but still giving you like a really good coverage. So this foundation costs 67 Australian dollars from the Sephora website. It was basically designed for the TV industry. So with HD cameras and all of that kind of equipment. It's designed to still look flawless and airbrushed under all of that like lighting and camera lens and everything and I, I do think it comes out beautifully when it's photographed, when it's on camera. I just love it. I really, really highly rate this one. The next foundation is the Cogendo Aqua Foundation. So I don't even know why I tried this in the first place. I obviously saw someone use it and decided I wanted to try it, but I cannot remember who. So I ordered it in the shade 143 which is my more tan shade and then I did go ahead and buy I think a year later a lighter shade in 113 and this is actually one of the sheerer coverage foundations that I have that I actually really love even though it gives me probably sheer to medium coverage for some reason I just really love this and I'm the type of person who loves full coverage. I feel like I can't go past a full coverage foundation. And I normally, with sheer foundations, am just not, not that into them. But this one is something else. It is so good. It gives me the most dewy, beautiful finish. It says on their website that it gives you a post-facial impression, like you've just had a facial and put your makeup on. So it like plumps the skin, makes you look dewy. I believe it's a Korean brand and it is meant to be high definition, which it does say on the bottles. I buy mine from PM Studio. They do attend iMats and you can get it at iMats for a discounted price. But yeah, I did order one online from PM Studio. Uh, and on the website, it costs $52. The only thing, this does not have a good shade range whatsoever. It's very, very limited. They've probably got less than 10 shades, which is crazy ridiculous because it's just stupid. But if you do like a super dewy, healthy, glowy looking foundation, then I think you would really, really like this. I don't know what else to say, but for some reason, this foundation is just one of my top Tens. This next foundation I believe is the most expensive one out of all of these top 10. It's the Dior Forever foundation and it costs $89. It's so, so pricey but it is actually so worth the splurge. It's medium to full coverage. I build it up to a full coverage as generally I do. I can't go past how airbrushed and beautiful it makes my skin look every time I wear this I'm like why don't I wear this all the time then I realize it's so expensive that I don't want to use all of it so I'm in the shade 021 which I believe is called linen I love the packaging obviously this is a luxury brand it's Dior it does have a pump and it's it's just so luxurious like really luxurious they sell it for us in Australia at Maya or David Jones generally. I don't believe that Mecca or Sephora sell it. I could be wrong. So that's where I would go to try, see if they'll give you a sample. I would highly recommend getting a sample before buying this because it is so expensive. But for me, I have just loved this for years. I feel like it just gives you such a beautiful finish. 
it looks so beautiful on camera whenever I use it in videos I'm when I'm editing them I'm like wow my skin looks really good thanks to this foundation so I mean yes it's expensive but I mean I don't know it lasts long on the skin and I love the coverage I just I really do love pretty much everything about this besides that price tag then the last two foundations I have are both from Tarte Cosmetics which I'm just gonna skim over because I did do a whole entire best of Tarte video and I went much more like into depth of why I love these foundations so much in that video so I'll link it down below but the first one is the Amazonian clay 12 hour full coverage foundation I love 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 this it's so creamy it's very thick it's like a cream consistency basically I love the coverage of this I love the way it looks my looks my skin look I love the way it makes my skin look. So this foundation off the Tarte website costs 54 Australian dollars. They have 40 shades, super full coverage, it's super long wearing and it just gives you such a nice airbrushed look to your skin. I feel like you can't explain it unless you really try it for yourself and it's just insanely good. I love the packaging as well. I feel like no one really makes squeeze tubes anymore. I guess the glass bottles are pretty to look at but I actually love this packaging. It's got the little bamboo screw on the bottom. This one's in the shade light sand and it's like my perfect in between shade. It's like my general shade. I can wear it with fake tan. Just have to bronze up more. I can wear it without fake tan. I love this. If you want to know more I will of course link that video down below because I feel like this video is already going to be super long. And then the last one is the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Water Foundation. This one costs $60, so it's a little bit more expensive, but it's still not crazy expensive. And it does only have 21 shades, so it's kind of like half, almost half the shade range of the other one. I have quite a few different shades of it. And it says it's a medium coverage with a naturally radiant finish, which I highly agree with. Like, it's definitely medium. I, I can build it up to full and it builds up beautifully. So it also says it's actually 20% water-based formula, provides gentle yet powerful coverage, helps prevent signs of aging, and has no chemical sunscreen ingredients. I just feel like this can give me a really nice light coverage if I want it, which, I mean, to be honest normally I don't but I can always build it up to be a full coverage and I love that about it and I just love the finish it gives my skin it just looks radiant and healthy just beautiful so this is the last foundation in my top 10 so that is going to be it for today's video I really hope you guys maybe learned something or found something that maybe you want to try out if you do then please let me know down below because I would love to hear what you think about any of these products and if you have tried them and they maybe haven't worked for you then let me know down below as well because why not but yeah I'm gonna stop rambling on don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already and I will see you guys in my next video bye I just said bye really weird bye bye I'm hot. I'm not ready for summer. I'm sweating. It's only spring. Why is Australia so hot? Bye. Hope I'm not getting a sweat moustache. I am a little bit. So um, I keep touching my hair. And. Does anyone else sweat above their upper lip like a little bitch? It's like the only place I really, really, really sweat. That and boob sweat because I have fucking ginormous boobs. Unfortunately. No.